companies need to come to the market right and raise money in the form of equity and that is why we have this entire elaborate trade cycle to facilitate this process for companies to raise money for expansion and also to facilitate investors like me and you to participate in the growth of this company and this is where we introduce the term ipo which is known as initial public offer go right now and click on the link in the description below and register for our course namaste money when the first time a company comes to the market and tells the investor that i need your money to fund my expansion so when the company which till yesterday was only held by a few shareholders decides to come to the stock market and say that i want to raise money in the form of equities so that you can participate in my growth and i am having access to your money so that i can grow my business and you can participate in my growth in in turn that is when the company launches what is known as an initial public offer or an ipo and that is the first time you as an investor get to buy a equity share of that particular company as a process what happens is the company which is private till now comes to the stock market or what we know as the faces as nse and bse they come and put a proposal to raise money for certain expansion they want to do and all that information is disseminated to all the investors who would be interested in investing in the company and then they give their offer to buy those shares of the company and once those shares are allotted to them the money goes to that particular company which has raised in the form of ipo and they can then use the money for growing and expanding their operations i think it's best if i take an example to run you through this we are all familiar with the brand name dominos which is known for its pizza delivery services the company that owns the franchisee for selling dominos pizzas in india sri lanka nepal and bangladesh is jubilant food works it is a indian food services company jubilant food works owns the master franchise rights to set up and run domino stores in these four countries recently the company also took up the franchise of another popular brand in the west by the name dunkin donuts the company was started in 1996 when it set up its first uh, store in india but over a period of time it has grown to the size that we know of today it was not without a little help from investors like me and you the company came out with an ipo in 2010 wherein they wanted to raise capital so that they could use that money to expand their operations and also prepay some of the loans that were outstanding at that point in time jubilant food works came out with an ipo at a price range of 135 to 145 The reason a range was given is because it allows people to bid for buying the shares of the company depending on what they think the company is worth between 135 and 145. Eventually the company was able to raise the amount of money they wanted and it listed on the stock exchange meaning it traded for the first time on the stock exchange for a price of 161 in February 2010. So if we go back to our investor that is Arjun if he had bought 1000 shares of this company at the ipo price of 145 and he would have paid this money to jubilant food works in january 2010 at that time the ipo cycle was much longer it took almost a month for a company to start trading on the stock exchange after they came out with an ipo today the cycle has reduced drastically to less than 10 days If Arjun would have bid for a thousand shares in Jubilant Food Works and bid at a price of one forty-five rupees per share, he would have transferred thousand into one forty-five, that is one lakh forty-five thousand rupees to Jubilant Food Works, who in turn would have assigned him a thousand shares, which would have got credited to his DMAT account. Now, since this is the first time the company is issuing shares, the company had issued a total of one point one crore shares, and now. Arjun had bought a thousand shares, so he owns that much small fraction of the total number of shares of the company, because he paid that much amount to the company against which he was assigned a thousand shares. After he paid one forty five rupees to the company in January, the company started trading on the stock exchange in the month of February. So on Feb eighteen, the company traded for the first time, and it traded at a price of one hundred and sixty one rupees. So you can see in a short span. 
Arjun actually made a quick small amount of profit on the shares he invested in this particular company. This is the second big reason why companies come out with an IPO. Apart from the fact that they want to raise money from investors, they want their shares to be traded on the stock exchange among a huge multitude of investors so that the real value of the share can be determined. So while the company thought that uh, 145 was a fair price at which the company was raising money, eventually when they started trading on the stock exchange, they traded at a higher price on the very first day. So when lakhs of investors were buying and selling shares of Jubilant Foodworks, those investors decided that, or those investors who are nothing but collectively known as the market, the stock market, decided that the value of the share should actually be 161 rupees and not, and not 145 because of which they started trading at a much higher price. And so somebody like Arjun who bought a thousand shares was actually sitting with a small profit of 16,000 in less than a month if he decided to go ahead and sell these shares. Now the question is, should he sell his shares when the company started listing at a higher price? Now the answer to this question is going to be very different from investor to investor. And that exactly is the beauty of the equity markets. At different price points, different investors or different fund managers or different experts as they call uh, sitting across and giving their analysis have different views about the same particular stock. So somebody may think that 145 is an expensive price for Jubilant Foodworks. Somebody else may think that 145 is a very cheap price to buy the share. And eventually all this collective thought of many people coming together and trying to figure out what the value of the share is, is what reflects in the trading value of BSE and NSE. So when the stock listed, it listed at the price of 161. If Arjun had sold the share, he would have made a good profit of 16,000 rupees in less than a month. But what if he believed that this company was just starting off, it was having only a small number of franchisees and it had a huge growth potential given that we, we as an India are a huge consumer market. Had he held on to the shares, then what profit would he have made? If you look at the current price of the stock as of September 2020, the price of the stock is 2,347 rupees. So the value of his shares, which is 1,45,000 has gone up to 22,7,000 rupees giving him a compounded annual return of 32% for his investments in Jubilant Foodworks. So had he sold off these shares when the company got listed, he would have made a profit of 16,000, but holding on till now would have given him a much higher profit. So whether you hold on to a share or not is a function of what you think a particular share will do. Will it do well or will it not do well? And that is where all your analysis comes in. You need to analyze various factors which go into uh, determining the value of a share. And it is not necessary that every company that comes out with an IPO will succeed. If I give you two contrasting examples of DMART and Reliance Power. Reliance Power came out with an IPO in the year 2008. It was the, if I'm right, the largest IPO at that time in the Indian market. It came out with an IPO price of 404 and the day the IPO got listed, it got listed at a price of 440. So it seemed at that point of time like a good company which had come out with a IPO raising money for the projects where the company wanted to invest the money was into power generation because that was the time we were highly deficient in terms of the demand and supply of power in India. But if you look at the current price of the share, it trades at a meager 2 rupees 30 paisa. That means we have lost 99% of the value of the company. If you as an investor had put money in this IPO, you would be sitting with a loss of 99% because today the value of the share is only 2 rupees 30 paisa. Versus a IPO of another successful company, DMART, which is owned by the company by name, Avenue Supermarkets Limited. It launched an IPO in 2017 for a price of 295. The day the IPO price listed, it got listed at a price of 600. That is the value almost doubled in a span of less than a month. The reason being the market participants who were buying and selling the share thought that the share is worth much more than the 295 rupees. And that's why they assigned it a price of 600 rupees based on the trades that were done on that particular day. And if you look at the current price of the stock in August 2020, it trades at a value of 2,299 rupees, which is almost a 
10 times growth in the value of the stock from 2017 March when it came out with its IPO to August 2020. So this kind of kind of gives you an idea of the amount of wealth creation that can happen in stocks and also the amount of wealth destruction that can happen in stocks if you don't choose the right stock. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed creating it for you. So what are you waiting for? Go right now on the link provided in the description below and register for our course Namaste Money. This course is an online course which will teach you all the basics about your personal finances and answer the questions of where you must invest, how you must invest and more importantly why you must invest in a particular investment product. Also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for freshly brewed content from Wealth Cafe. And don't forget to save hard and invest smart.